penalty interference call and then the plunge by Drew Tate. Here's Brown now. And Brown also good field position here. Another good return over the 45-yard line. Well, we're going to take a peek at one of our officials, Ben Major, number 31. Watch exactly how he goes through his actions on this play, watching right down the line. Now we're going to take you back to the pregame. Slightly different outfit for Ben Major. This is pregame routine. He gets himself in various positions on the field and visualizes plays and his calls. And that's exactly what you saw moments ago. Aaron Stone drops Andrew Harris. Minimal gain at best. Well, there is Ben Major with the stripes on. He's a two-piece suit earlier. I like, I like, he's into it pregame. Well, there it is, and that's exactly the stance you saw, exactly the movement you saw. There you have, see some of the other fellows having a little bit of fun with him as he went through his routine, but. Professional. This, exactly, this is how he gets ready for the game. He's got one of the toughest spots. You see him right in the middle of the field. Gotta keep your wits about you. Keep your head up. Lulak. His back foot, tight coverage. Right, Bruce again. Coverage provided by Keon Raymond. I don't know if Keon Raymond could have been any closer to Arlan Bruce. That was a perfect toss from Travis Lulek. Well, it sure was. And interesting to see the fast start that Travis Lule is off to here against the Calgary Stampeders. When you look at his numbers this season, two games against Calgary, Travis Lule has completed 46% of his passes through two games versus 61.1% against the rest of the league. So far tonight, a perfect six for six. Two guys who have struggled against the Stampeders in the past, Lule and G. Roy Simon. Now Lule out of the pocket, look out, hit hard. Aaron Stone again spies Travis Lule and a rare sack given up by the BC Lions as Lule escaped the pocket. That's only the second sack that the Lions have given up that have allowed over the last four games. Yeah, the offensive line, Wally Bono has spoken frequently about them being one of the keys to this team's turnaround. There you see just the second sack allowed in their last 143 passing attempts. Well, here's a passing attempt coming now. Second down and 15 yards to go. Lula, here's the rush, has to throw it away. Did he get it over the line of scrimmage? He got hit again. The Stampeders were coming hard. It's the final play of this opening quarter. BC Lions lead the Calgary Stampeders 14 to 7. 15 minutes of play completed here in the BC place tonight. 14 to 7. The Lions lead after a very quick, lightning quick start here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And the Calgary Stampeders. Quite frankly, dug themselves in a hole coming out of the gate here. Three things that'll drive coaches absolutely crazy, Rod. You look at a turnover on the opening play, followed by a big play in the next series to Sean Gore, followed by defensive penalties, all giving the BC Lions a short field. And BC, led by Travis Lule, has capitalized on the opportunities they've been given. Lions, for the first time this season, scored on their first possession a touchdown. Paul McCallum has yet to attempt a field goal. He'll be punting now as the Lions offense stalls. Two returners now. McCallum so adept at angling the football and pinning teams within 20 yard lines. And even the 10 yard line. Another kick angled to the corner. And it bounces right at the one. It's coming back now. What a kick by McCallum. There'll be no yards on that play. But that's what the master the oldest player in the CFL does best. So let's go down to Farhan with more. Rod, you mentioned that uh, he's just one 
field goal, one made field goal away from tying Dave Ridgeway's consecutive field goal mark. Had he tried it there, Paul McCallum, that is, it would have been a 52-yard attempt. No yards. Now, they believe that McCallum's range right now confidently is around 47 to 48 yards. I asked him about the difference of kicking here at BC Place, the new BC Place, which now is not supported by compressed air. The old stadium was, and he believes that that took seven to eight yards off his range. It really used to deaden his kicks, but now it's got the same dynamics of kicking outdoors, and he believes he can still make those from 47 or 48. Well, he also owns the record for the longest field goal in CFL history. Landon Talley on an inside handoff for reversing field, and he'll pick up a first down. Paul McCallum's having a season for the ages at 41. Kicking at almost 95%, the all-time record for percentage in a season, 90.3, set by Louis Pasaglia. BC Lion legend, Louis Pasaglia, but Paul McCallum just gets better with age, having virtually perfected his craft. Stan Peters scored on their last possession. Down seven. Coker again tripped up. Nice tackle there by Karan Williams on the turf. Tripped him up. BC Lions very aware of the speed of Lamarcus Coker. Hasn't had a lot of touches yet in this Calgary backfield. This guy who doubles as a kick returner. Game breaker. Second down and three yards to the 31. And going the other way, fooling everybody was Henry Burris. They were biting on Lamarcus Coker that time, and Burris, also so adept, one of the most mobile quarterbacks in the CFL, picks up the first down. Well, one of the things you have to be so aware of in defending the Calgary Stampeders is the threat of two running backs and Burris. And it's now Lamarcus Coker in the, the lineup instead of Joffrey Reynolds. But including Reynolds, the Stampeders entered this week with three of the CFL's top ten runners. No question about what the engine is that drives their own. Burris, quick hitter, Taylor. Ryan Phillips drops him. Taylor catching the ball in the flat. Are you surprised by the transition in Calgary? With Joffrey Reynolds taking a back seat now? Uh, I'm, I'm really not. It's always tough, of course, for, for anybody around the CFL to see a guy like Joffrey Reynolds, who has been one of the top players in this league over the last several years and has been a class act, kind of forced out of the lineup. But the fact is, John Cornish has been ready for this for probably two years. And, and I think offers him a, a little bit more explosive option in the backfield. Can't argue with the success. Burris. The backfield and banging away is Rob Cote. See where the spot is. It looks like it could move the sticks, and it will. A fresh set of downs coming up for the Calgary Stampeders here early in this second quarter. Uh, Rob Cote, the veteran fullback, frequently used as a receiver out of the backfield that time off. A nice misdirection counter boot by the Stampeders, faking to Coker on that counter. Another flipping the full back to the flat. Another former junior star, Rob Cote. Cote in some motion now. First and ten, Burris, quick drop. And Nick Lewis. His first catch, just over the midfield stripe. It'll be second down conversion time. That's where Nick Lewis is usually the go-to guy. Would be a surprise to see the Stampeders lean on Nick Lewis even a little bit more this week. With Kenyon Rambo out of that lineup. Another veteran slot for the Stamps. Second down conversions. Nick Lewis is third in the CFL behind G.Y. Simon and Jamel Richardson. Number one in yak yardage. Yards after the catch. Looked like the Lions jumped. Burris continues, but whistles blow here. Lions jump, or were they drawn offside by procedure? It's against BC. Offside, Calgary number nine. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. 
It is BC Karan Williams. So it'll be second down and about a yard. Karan Williams looked like he reacted to the motion of the Calgary Stampeders receivers. Nick Lewis was the inside slot to that side. But Nick Lewis, when you're a defensive end, you've always got to be aware of the crack block coming from the outside end. That may have drawn Perron's attention. Second down and uh, pounding it again up the middle. John Cornish. He, like, he takes hits, bounces off tackles, spins, whatever it may be. John Cordish usually is going forward. Well, Cornish had a great university career, University of Kansas, but prior to that, he actually started some games here at BC Place, playing his high school football locally at St. Thomas More. See how slippery John Cornish can be. Five guys had a shot at him before he went down. Chance to play at home. Burris calls his own number. Henry Burris in all kinds of trouble. But after picking up four yards, was able to make it positive yardage. Looked like he might have been caught in the backfield. Very close to also having his helmet and face mask grab. Oh, Henry Burris using his legs as one of the keys here for the Stampede as he sets for a second that he might be able to break contain. Almost a face mask there against Khalif Mitchell. He keeps the hand down low. Good positive play for the Stampeders on first down. Little hit screen. Lewis runs into a cluster of orange players, including Anton McKenzie. And... Uh, the Calgary Stampeders are going to be short here, and so Rene Paradis will come out and attempt a field goal. So again, the BC Lions defense holds. You see the aggressiveness to the ball of that BC Lions defense fighting through blockers on that swing screen to Nick Lewis to break up the play. There it is, the Concordia kicker. 41-yarder. 75% this season, bit of a line drive shot, and it's wide. Tim Brown's thinking about it. He will bring it out. Tim Brown may have thought better. He fumbled the football, and what was a bad choice became a terrible decision. Calgary has the football when we come back to BC Place. Devon on the spot. Devon Claybrooks has been a spectator the last couple of games, but he is the guy who recovers this football. Well, a great strip there by Justin Phillips, who's been not just a starting defensive end, but a special team stalwart for the Stampeders. Claybrooks, as you mentioned, Enjoying his return to the lineup, celebrating with a fumble recovery there. Much to the joy of head coach John Huffman. Lions defense has not given up any points off turnovers in the last six games. This is where they start to roar. There's a penalty flag, however, in the end zone. Might be an illegal contact call back there. As the Lions brought the house. James Urichuk in on the tackle, but let's sort this out with Glenn Johnson. Go back, though, to the decision by Tim Brown to bring that ball out of the end zone. Not a wise one at that point. It wasn't a long enough field goal for Brown to bring it out. He didn't have the space. Legal contact on a receiver. BC will go up half the distance to the goal. First down. So first and goal to the five-yard line. Corey Banks pleading his case back there. Stampeders again. Good chance to tie the game here. A little pitch to Cornish. John Cornish scores. And that's what he has been doing ever since. He took off over the starting job from Joffrey Reynolds. John Cornish finds the end zone again. Well, you can just see John Cornish, the vision, 
as this play developed. Perfect execution, nice lead block by the fullback, Cote. Gets an offensive lineman out in front of him as well. Number 53, the left tackle, Edwin Harrison, pulled around. Cornish just lowered his head. BYOB, be your own blocker. Get past the one unblocked defender. Two touchdowns last week for Cornish. One here tonight. They're all tied at 14 in BC. Scary moment for Koshi Mwamba on the extra point. He's the leaper. He's right on the left edge of your screen, number three for the BC Lions as he goes airborne. The long snapper for Calgary. Randy Chevrier undercuts his legs. Mwamba comes down right on his forehead. He was slow to get up. I don't think many of the Lions saw it, but the ones that did went right after Chevrier after the play. Well, chance for some atonement here for Tim Brown. Up near the 34 after coughing up the football led to Calgary coming right back in the second quarter. Stampeders dash back 14 all here under the roof tonight not open raining outside in Vancouver. Let's go down to Farhan. Rod, I was standing next to Wally Bono as he sent Tim Brown into the end zone on that last field goal attempt. He instructed him to give up the single point. While he was in the end zone, he was gesturing, hoping he would get down, and he was furious when he didn't, even before he saw the fumble. When he got back to the bench, Bono let Brown have it, needs him to make better decisions. Both of Calgary's touchdowns in this game have been set up by poor special teams play for the Lions. Brown carrying the rock up over the 40-yard line. Right you are, Farhan. Larry Taylor return, of course, led to the first touchdown and that fumble resulting in seven points. The second and short yardage now as Travis Lule looks to the bench here for some guidance. Lule has been so good. His numbers so impressive in this six game win streak. The Lions have been able to peel off. Motion here, and once again, Tim Brown, there you go, over midfield. Right, nice bit of misdirection there in terms of the play calling.